Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But if you're ready to level up your life and get results that truly matter in your health, business, mindset, and relationships, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Sheer Madness, where we have unscripted, real conversations with the world's top athletes, entrepreneurs, and coaches. Discover real world and tactical advice from the best in the business. Let's go. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Sheer Madness. Today, we are doing an inside look with one of my beautiful clients, uh, Britt Billington. She has been working with me for, I think, over at least eight months, coming up even maybe even on a year. And she's had such an incredible transformation that hasn't been just a physical transformation, but a complete mental transformation. And just the confidence that the, just this woman radiates now is so amazing. And I know so many people are going to take something away from her story here today. And I don't want to give too much details away, but uh, she did come to me with wanting to heal her gut, uh, suffering from ulcerative proctitis and through all of the testing and through the nutrition, but really working a lot on the stress management side and digging deep, we were really able to make some incredible changes for her where she's now able to live the life that she ultimately wants to. So uh, Brett, thank you so much for coming on the show here today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited and it's an honor, honestly. Yeah, I know I've been uh, trying to get you to come on here for quite some time because literally every time we have a consult, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, we need to be recording this because as much as I've been Brett's coach, she also comes in and just like shares like how much faith has played a role on her journey and we really, really dig deep. And that's where I know we'll definitely go here today. But before we get into a lot of that, um, what were some of the initial reasons as to why you even reached out and, you know, what was that backstory? So, um, like you said, I was diagnosed with ulcerative proctitis um, and mild ulcerative colitis in 2009. Um, I had two little babies at the time and um, I had lived this life for a while of just being sick, being in bed, all of that. Um, and went right as I was approaching 40 I had just had enough. I was tired of being sick and feeling bad all the time. I couldn't be there for my family. And so all of the gut issues I had bloating and, you know, having to run to the restroom all the time and just never really knowing what to expect every day when I woke up, it was, you know, sometimes I felt okay. And then other times I would be sick and in bed for, you know, two, three days. And so as I was almost, you know, approaching my 40th birthday, I decided like I was done. I was done with that life and I didn't want it anymore. And I had, you know, tried to get other help from um, doctors and I was just frustrated. I left upset and in tears almost every time because they all had the same answers and it wasn't an answer that I was going to accept anymore. And that is what made me start to really um, dive into, um, a different approach, you know, and learning more about functional medicine and all of that. And that's when I came across you. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you took our risk. I know we hopped in, we did that free, uh, 15, 30 minute call at the time you shared with me of everything that you had walked through. And it sounds like, you know, it was just really focusing on managing the symptoms for quite some time. And I think we related right off the bat of, I almost had my large intestine removed. Um, I would lay in bed every single day in terrible, terrible pain, chronically bloated. And it's like, hey, there is another way. So um, I don't want to speak for you, but it it sounded like, okay, this person's been through it, has come out on the other side. And that allowed you to get curious and be willing to take that risk because it is a risk, right? It's scary every time you go on this journey because there's thoughts of, okay, is it going to work this time? Am I going to get different answers? Am I going to get better? What were a lot of like the fears for you that you felt like came up or even apprehensions um, with going on this journey? Yeah. Kind of like what you said, I think one of my biggest fears was that like, this was just the life that I have, you know, and these diagnoses that I got and these issues were just 
part of my life now and that there was nothing that could be done. Um, I was hopeful, but I was also fearful because of all the times before that I had tried and it had failed and it didn't work. And so my fear was just that everyone else, you know, that I would hear your clients speak and that's what, you know, would bring me hope and listening to your story. It like brought me so much hope. And, but then there was just that doubt in my mind that like, I was still different. Like somehow my story was still different from everyone else's and that that wasn't in the cards for me, that, that, that healing just wasn't going to happen for me because I'd lived with this way for so long. Yeah. And I think that's so common, especially when you have been like passed on from a doctor to doctor is not getting a whole, a whole bunch of answers. Um, and it's not easy to be like, okay, I'm going to take this risk one more time, but there's that fear of, okay, if this doesn't work, then it's just going to validate that, that lie, that, that story that we tell ourselves of like, there, like you said, there's something wrong with me. There's something broken. You know, I know a lot of other people are getting better, but this is just, you know, I guess how I'm going to have to live for the rest of my life. And I even remember on my own journey, lying in bed one day and just being like, is this just how my life has got to be now? Like, is this just what it is? And that's like a really, really, really scary place to be. And even though, even when you get started on a journey, um, like we did all of the testing and everything and we got some answers, but those, those aren't that easy to just like get rid of even too. Um, and we really had to do a lot of the work on like the mindset side and even the limiting beliefs as well, too, because it, it makes so much sense after you've been, you've tried so many things that haven't worked, we create that, that story. And it's almost like, can I trust this? Can I trust this? Um, can I really, really believe that I am healing, that I will be healed ultimately and I think even on your journey, it wasn't until we really got into like truly believing that and knowing that like deep, like knowing that deep in your heart, that everything really also did start to fall into place. Um, what, what do you feel like were some of like the initial things that came up for you, even when you did get started? Cause I know it was a risk of just going on the journey in of itself. Um, but then getting started, you're like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So whenever I started and you were, you would, you know, you told me from the beginning, like, this is kind of like a long game. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And even though you hear that, like you still want, you still want it to happen overnight, you know? So it was like, that was what was, that was kind of like at the very beginning that was hard for me is because like, like I was excited and I made this investment in, you know, you know, financially. And I made this investment in myself and like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to trust this process. <laughs> and it was like, just very um, hard for me at first to like, get in that mindset of like, it's okay that it's going to take some time. And I'm just going to do what she says. And I'm just going to trust that what she says is going to get me to where I want in the end. Mm. Um, a couple of months into it, I would see some results or, you know, start feeling a little bit better, but then was still dealing with, you know, cause I had so many different <laughs> things that came up. Um, what really stood out to me was just like how, um, how lonely, I guess I felt in it. Mm -hmm. Um, the great thing was being able to come meet with you because every time I got to talk with you, you made me feel like, okay, like I'm not alone. This is normal everything I feel is normal everything I'm thinking is normal like I'm not like crazy because <laughs> yeah. you start to feel that way um and so that was like super um eye-opening to me of just like allowing myself to feel the way that I felt like you being there to tell me that it was okay um to feel that way was huge for me and it was just like helped me really start to like gradually shift that mindset to like okay Mm. like I'm allowed to feel this way I'm not going to stay here you know I think we talked that through a lot of like feeling it and just releasing it because almost like the more that I stressed about how I was feeling the worse I was making myself so yeah 100% and what you guys are is really talking about is sometimes like we don't actually allow ourselves to feel the feelings like that are actually coming up for example like for Britt, it made perfect sense that she would at times feel frustrated, that at times she would feel sad. 
but it was almost like a denial of like, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want to be mad. And that actually pushing those feelings away actually causes them to creep in more and more and more, but also then creates a new feeling. It creates an anxiety, creates a lot more on top of it. Um, and none of these feelings are wrong nor are bad. It makes sense that we would be frustrated. I heck I was frustrated all the time when I was healing my gut. It is, it's not fun. No one actually enjoys it. Um, but those emotions are there for a reason. And I think a lot of what we did was allowing ourselves to, okay, today I'm frustrated today. I'm feeling a little bit sad and allow those emotions to be there, to be what they are instead of pushing them away. And what that actually did is it validated like you are correct to feel this way, but then it created space after for those feelings to pass and be like, okay, now, how do I want to show up? How do I want to feel? And I think it was when we actually really started to dive into some of that work, yeah. um, you know, that there was a huge, huge, huge shift in you because you're like, oh, wow, I, I really actually do have a lot of control. And I'm like, you said, I'm not crazy. Um, because heck yes, you're like healing your gut. You have ulcerative proctitis, ulcerative colitis. You have an autoimmune condition. You've been in massive pain. You've struggled to eat all of these foods. Like I would be kind of worried. I feel like you were like, had no emotion <laughs> revolving around that at all. But sometimes we do really deny ourselves to really feel what it is that we're going through. Ultimately, um, we're just so focused on how we want to feel instead of actually tuning into our body. Like, how do I actually feel right now. And I know we're touching base on a lot of like the, the mindset stuff of everything, but we did all of the functional testing to the gut microbiome, hormones, thyroids, adrenals, and just to get a little bit of backstory for the listeners, um, you did come back with um, low stomach acid, low enzyme production. Um, we had some poor gut motility going on there too. Um, gut motility is just kind of the transit of food overall. And um, I think a little bit of some genetic stuff going on that was playing a little bit of a role. And then really at the core of what was contributing to a lot of your symptoms was the bacteria overgrowth um, that you had, which for anyone listening, most of the time um, when we're experiencing bloating, dysbiosis, even if you have an autoimmune condition, we have to have to look at the gut microbiome. So it, we did get her on in an elimination diet. She did awesome at that, started to feel a little bit better. We got her in some enzymes. She felt a little bit better. Um, we addressed some of the mindset stuff. And I think that's where we noticed, uh, you know, a pretty good shift because our emotions just play such a role in how we feel. Um, we can think about something funny and literally laugh, like it shows up in our body ultimately. So if we're constantly you know, feeding this self negativity, negative self talk, of course, that's gonna, you know, manifest throughout our life, we can't heal a body that we're constantly, you know, attacking mentally with with the words that we speak to us, it's, it's gonna be virtually impossible. So it is really the full picture of everything. Um, eventually, we did actually a full on antimicrobial protocol with Brits, where we tried to eradicate some of that bacteria, um, and that was actually what we just finished recently where we were like, oh my gosh, like a lot of your symptoms, the bloating, the distension have gone away where we actually were to step away a little bit from not so much gut healing, um, but looking at even a little bit more of like, what does this look like to be normal again? And that's like a whole nother journey even too, which I bet you at the beginning, like even thinking down that road, it would be like, okay, now I have to think about how to live quote unquote normal, which is gonna be different for everybody, but how to not have that fear for food even to that, you know, we all get over time, especially if you've had gut issues, I know you can relate to this, but there's a fear for food because food has hurt you for so long. Um, so it's really retraining the body that it is safe, that we are healed and truly believing that to the core. Um, Brent, what do you think for you throughout that whole journey between like the diet side, uh, we did all the supplement protocols and then what we've been talking about was like the biggest shift for you. The biggest shift for me was I think when I really realized that that stress piece that I had, I had done everything. I had done the elimination diet. I'd done all the things that, you know, you just mentioned. Um, but I had, 
it was when I actually was listening to a podcast that you had done with another client Mm -hmm. that she brought up this exact thing. And it was like the second she said it, it clicked with me of like, she said like she had done everything except for managed her stress. And when I realized like, that's me, like I had done everything Rachel told me to, like I, t- I, I eliminated everything. I, I was strict. I did everything she told me to. And yes, I was seeing improvement, but it still was like, something was just not there yet. And it was that when I realized like, okay, I have not dealt with the stress stress is like the stress and anxiety is a huge piece of what I'm dealing with. And the fact that I haven't even like really worked on that or even addressed that as much is when I realized, okay, like this is what was missing. And I really started to focus in on eliminating stress and dealing with anxiety in my life, which is funny because I do feel like the more I healed my gut, those things got better as well. So it was like, they kind of went together. It's like, as I was healing, those things started to get better, but also realizing, Hey, like you're part of this too. Like you've got to start to manage this and figure out how to eliminate this stress and anxiety from your life. And, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, everybody's is different. Um, and so I started just really put things like that into practice. And of course, then my faith plays a huge part in that as well. So just really, um, you know, diving into that and just trying to bring, you know, all of this together. It was like merging all of these parts of my life together. Yeah. And that was when things just like started to shift over into like, okay, here we go. Like, this is what it's all about. (laughs) It all starts to click at that point in time. And you can't have one without the other. You can change the diet. You can take the supplements. Um, You can even do the complete opposite and address this address the stress and all of those things are going to help. Don't get me wrong. They're all going to help in different ways, but for the whole person to heal and for the gut to function optimally, we have to really look at all ends of the spectrum. That's what holistic really actually means mind and body looking at what's off internally, addressing our nutrition, addressing our toxic thoughts, um, addressing our pressure, you know, that we put on ourselves. It's no coincidence that most of the women who end up coming to work with me are type A, perfectionistic, go, go, go. I'll raise my hand. I'm one of them. I'm the one who ended up with gut issues. I tend to attract all of them. Um, And we put so much pressure on ourselves. And actually a part of the healing journey is lifting a lot of that pressure, lifting a lot of the perfectionism that we do carry um, to really allow our body to be, to feel what it wants to feel, even if it's not always like a good feeling, but really more so allowing versus forcing. Um, And I think that's really the big difference between the two. Um, I heard you mention, um, you know, you really started to work on the stress. What helped you the most kind of minimize some of that stress overall for you? Um, Well, it started with, I, you know, just kind of started a morning routine where, you know, I would I was always just kind of all over the place. I've always kind of been like, go, 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 right? (laughs) Yeah. And so, you know, I would get all the kids to school and then, you know, come home and hit the ground running because I like everything perfect. So I, you know, was just going right into straightening the house and doing all the things and getting everything organized and not really ever stopping just to take time to, um, you know, just sit for a minute and, I started to uh, journal. I started to have a quiet time. I would read my Bible in the morning and do a Bible study. Um, and then just kind of just sit and like be, <laughs> you know, just sit and let, let the Lord speak to me, let myself just kind of, um, you know, get ready for the day. And it was like, I was setting my day up and then I would work out, you know, whenever I would get done with that. And it was like, those things and starting my day that way just like started to help me really, you know, bring down my stress levels and that anxiety. And then like, I was able to then focus the rest of the day on like what I needed to do instead of just running around all the time and like hitting my wheels and not ever really focusing on me. And that was a huge, huge thing for me because I struggled with, um, focusing on myself because I'd always felt like that if I focused on me, that was selfish Mm -hmm. uh, because I have a husband and three kids and that they need, you know, they needed me. And it was not like, I I always just viewed that as like something that was 
wrong for some reason. Like I was selfish for putting myself first. But when I realized that if I don't put myself first and take care of me, then I can't be what I need to be for my family. And that was ultimately like what kind of just opened my eyes of like, if I, if I'm not, if I'm not well, you know, like I can't show up for them and I can't be everything. Being a wife and a mom is like the greatest joys of my life. And if I can't show up there and be everything, you know, that the Lord has created me to be, if I'm not focusing on me to make me better, then I can't do those things. And that was such a huge eye opener for me of like, Mm -hmm. I have to take care of myself so I can take care of them. That is, that is so powerful. And I can't tell you how often I hear that from women who are especially givers. And I think like our society has conditioned us to be like, be selfless, be selfless. And like, yes, of course we want to give, we want to serve. Um, I think that's what creates um, a sense of purpose in anybody's life, whether it's to your husband, to your kids, whether it's serving in church, whether that's in any way through the work that you do. Um, but at the core, if we aren't taking care of ourselves first and foremost, we have nothing to give. And it's like that realization. Um, I've gone through this with so many of my clients. I even had a conversation with a client here yesterday, the exact same thing. She's a nurse. Um, she's works in pediatrics even too. Um, and she works with really, really sick kids, but she's just burnt out, burnt out, trying to heal her gut too. And all she did is start to take 15 minutes of a break in the middle of her work day to just like get into her body, calm her nervous system down, very similar to what you're doing with your morning routine. And she said, Rachel, I realized when I did that and I went back into my work, I actually was enjoying my work more. I was showing up more for these kids who really actually needed me to be present in these moments. And I was doing a better job at my work and serving these kids that much better. And it was like this light bulb that went off. This just gave me chills even talking about it because it's so true. And that may be cliche saying of like, you can't pour from an empty cup, but it, it really, really is true. Um, It is actually selfish to not take care of your mind, your body, your soul, because that is really what you're giving to the world. And you can't really give an emptiness to the world back. So I think that's beautiful. And so many women need to hear that, especially women who wake up and they're go, go, go. I'm one of those two. And what I'm really hearing you say is, you know, in the morning by you slowing down, stepping more into a human being versus a human doing, I sometimes <laughs> forget that we forget we're a human being um we calm our nervous system because immediately like when our nervous systems goes into that fight or flight into that sympathetic state um it's not when we're going to be able to heal that gut we're not in a rest and digest place all of our energy is going to our extremities to our brain you know trying to think quick this is when we get tunnel tunnel vision quite a bit Um, we disassociate quite a bit from what's happening around with us. We're just focused on what's the next thing that I have to get done. Um, And that's not really a healing place for the body. So I think the morning is the most crucial time to really calm the nervous system. And there's so many different modalities to do it. Like you've mentioned, you know, Bible, Bible study. Um, You've mentioned like prayer. You mentioned just uh, literally just being and slowing down and getting into your body and out of your head, really feeling your body. Um, I know for myself, when I just can slow down to like actually focus on my breath and feel my body, it's like, oh, wow, this is how I'm supposed to feel. And I really realize how like high strung I am for 99% of the time. So it is crucial to get our body more into this, um, this parasympathetic state, this like restful state, not saying we're not ever going to get into that stressful state. It will definitely come here and go when it happens, we allow it, but it's not allowing that to stay longer than it really essentially needs to stay overall. Um, One thing I also love about your journey is you've had an incredible support system along the way. Tell me a little bit about that. So obviously my number one supporter has been my husband. Um, he has just been literally, I couldn't have done it without him. I mean, this is a, is a hard journey and it is not easy. And when you have the support of your spouse, your, you know, significant other, whatever, it literally completely changes things because he was my cheerleader, you know, he would, um, remind me of how far I've come. He's just, he was just there 
to just continue to, to give me support throughout this whole thing. Like I couldn't have done it without him. Even financially, you know, like this was, you know, uh, investing in this was huge. And, you know, we are a one income family and I'm a stay at home mom. And so, you know, that was a huge thing for us. And I, I was, t- I, sh- I, I didn't want to ask him to have to do that. And he said, I don't care what it takes. Like I'll sell a car. <laughs> like I just want my wife better. And so knowing that I had that support, knowing that I had him just like 100% cheering me on. He, if I would get down or I would get upset, he was there to remind me why I was doing it. What, you know, what I was after, you know, what things that you had said, cause I would come home and tell him everything you said, you know, so I had him to, um, just, just give me his 100% support. And it literally like, I, I do not think I could have done it otherwise, you know, because it was hard and you, the times that I felt like giving up, he didn't let me give up, you know? And so it was just amazing to have that. And, you know, my family was also very supportive as well. I had, you know, that was, that was another thing. Like we go on vacations together and that kind of thing. Um, and everyone in my family was just like, can you eat this? What can we do? What can we do? Like, can we make this? Can you eat this? Like, that helps too, because I've also been in situations where you, I didn't have that, you know, and I've been in those situations and it made things harder, Mm -hmm. you know, for sure. And so support from your loved ones and people that are around you is so important in this journey. Yeah. Support having that is crucial. And I know not everybody always feels like they have the level of support. Sometimes it really is just your coach. Um, and that's where it can be powerful to work with the coach. Um, but your, your person, your husband, your wife, if you're a guy that's listening here or your, your significant other could also be like your mom, your brother, your sister, just finding somebody who you can share this journey with and really open up to them. Um, who's earned that level of trust from you to share what you've been walking through can also be incredibly healing to feel like you're not alone on this journey. No one wants to go through a healing journey alone. And I think it can really, really um, help with that healing to know you have someone who's walking with you, walking beside you. So shout out to uh, Britt's husband. Every time she's come in, I've been like, I need to meet your husband. He's a good (laughs) good man. Um, And it's so great to hear stories like that too, um, because you know, we hear a lot of stories of like unsupportive partners from time to time. And I think it is beautiful to hear how supportive your husband has been, how supportive your kids have been, your family overall. Um, And I know that'll give a lot of other people hope. Um, And I know it also, part of it probably even stemmed from you and how you even show up in your own home life. You know, I mean, you're someone who's just, you know, I know you went through like a hard time, but like when I, you came in, I'm like, this one is just beautiful, not physically, just physically, if you guys are watching, but I mean, she just has a beautiful soul, a beautiful radiance about her overall too. Um, and just carrying in that in everything that you do, but not like a, like a pushover type thing by any means. Like I also know the stories too, where you would tell me you'd go out to eat. And I mean, Britt had some hard boundaries too, when going out where people who weren't so supportive of her, you would go out to you know, you still went out on like the date nights and to the events and you tried to keep with your social life, but you had to put some pretty, you know, hard boundaries of like, I don't need to explain to other people what I'm doing, but it is, no, I don't need to drink. I don't need to eat those foods because my healing is that much more important. Yeah. 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 That was huge. That was very huge for me. Yeah. So what does this mean for you? Do you feel like moving forward after this? Um, I'm excited. I mean, it is scary. Like you touched on earlier about just kind of like that next step of the journey of like allowing myself to introduce things back in and to, you know, start kind of living life a little bit more, um, and doing more things. Um, that part is, is a little intimidating just because you've told yourself no in personalities like ours, like we were talking about a while ago, like when I'm all in, I'm all in. And when I tell myself I can't do something, like I'll stick to it and I won't do it, you know? And so then turning around and being like, okay, but it's okay now. And so walking through that, and I know you and I've had conversations about, you know, taking steps because you don't just go from this, you know, healing part to just, okay, everything's fine. And you, you move on. So moving forward, like it's exciting because 
my life has been completely changed. Um, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, (laughs) I know here's the thing. People always looked at me physically and thought I was fine because I've always been, you know, on the smaller side. Part of that is because I've been sick, you know, part of, part of being small and the, the, that, the, my physical physique was because I was sick, you know, and people didn't see that. They just assumed that I was always healthy, you know, because people like to think that just because you're small means you're healthy. And I am like the (laughs) perfect person to show that just because you are a certain size or a certain physique, I was so unhealthy, you know? And so people like going forward and like telling people like how I my life has been changed and letting people see that. And then talking about like what all I've been through, like, that's so exciting. I'm just excited about the whole thing. Like moving forward, this has brought so much like to the surface. I've, it's brought not just like healing to my gut. Like we talked about the mindset and emotions and all of that, but like, you know, the Lord has used this journey to change so many things. So, you know, some people, you know, some people, the, the heal, the whole healing thing, like, do I believe that the Lord can heal me? Yes. I also believe that I have to put in work right for myself. Um, and yeah, he could, you know, at the snap of a finger perform a miracle, but at the end of the day, like if he would have done that, yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't have grown. And though I, I don't like that I've had, you know, those issues, I wouldn't change it. Like I really wouldn't change my story because I wouldn't be right here where I am today if it wasn't for all of that. Oof, that's powerful there. And because I know looking back on my journey, I had the exact same thing. I wouldn't be doing the work that I am. I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. Um, and to be able to show up not only for myself, but therefore other people. And it sounds like you're able just to like lift all of this weight that has been there. And it wasn't just the gut issues. It was just like the anxiety, the pressure and all of this and being like, I don't need this here anymore. This weight has been, you know, lifted off of me. And just like you said, it's not going to be like a light switch of like, I'm going exactly back, but it's, Hey, I'm going to take a step forward and I'm going to take another step forward. And I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to carry these different things with me, especially, especially everything that I've had to work on on the mindset side, allowing myself to feel, allowing myself to get into my body, um, allowing what comes up to be there instead of always trying to, you know, push it away, ultimately giving grace, grace to ourselves through what we do walk through. But I, I am a believer too. And, you know, we've talked a lot about faith and I love that you and I get to connect on that even too. Um, But there's a reason as to why we go through the valleys that we do, you know, God purposely puts us through valleys in life um, because he's trying to shape us, change us, mold us, and help us step into the versions of ourselves that we are meant to ultimately be. So that is so powerful for, for women and men to hear of like, I don't regret any of it. Like, I'm so glad that this actually happened, not to me but for me, ultimately, you know, walking through it all. And I I would say the end, but it's never the end. So it's a continual, you know, healing journey that we get to go on ultimately. Um, What advice would you give to someone who's thinking about going on this journey for themselves? And maybe they're on the edge, they're kind of hesitant. They're like, hey, it's an investment, not just financially, but like, I don't know if I can do it. It's, they're, they're scared, just like how you were early on. Um, I, you know, I, it's one of those things that I feel like I I just tell people like you have, you have to, everybody gets to their point where they've had enough. Right. And when you get there, you know, you, you just go all in. And if you do just here, here's what I tell people sometimes, because whenever the, oh, the investment or this or that comes up, you get one body. (sighs) You get one body and that is it. And we have no problem going out and buying 50 and $60,000 cars and, you know, these houses and, you know, furniture, you spend thousands of dollars on a sofa that you sit on that you're going to get away, you know, you're going to get rid of it in year, you know, years from now. Like we think nothing of that. We just do it. Right. But for some reason, when it comes to investing in our health, we're like, oh, wait, but that's oh, that's X amount of dollars. Like that's too expensive. And I'm like, 
you know, all of those things that we spend money on, they're going to be in a junkyard. They're going to be in the dump someday. Like those all, they rust, they go, you know, they get old, whatever you get another one, but you don't get another body. Like this is it. And so my biggest thing is like, take, take this time, take the money, invest in yourself, because if you don't like (laughs) you're going to eventually, right? Like you're going to eventually have to spend money because if you don't take care of yourself, your health is going to decline and you're going to be, you know, spending who knows how much on medical bills and, you know, all of the things, just like I did before I, you know, came to you and I'd gone through all of this stuff and spent all of this money. And if I could have just like come to you from the beginning, like I could have saved myself a lot of money and heartache, Mm. (laughs) but I just say, you know, just don't sit around and wait. Like, you just do it. And I try to tell people that, that ask me, you know, about my journey and they ask me what I've, you know, what I've gone through and all that. I'm like, listen, it, yes, it's not easy. It's hard, but let me tell you something on the other side of it. Like you will never regret it ever. Like my life will never be the same because of you and everything that you have done for me. Like literally I just, like, I adore you. And I just think that like, (laughs) you're the best. And I try to tell everybody that because I'm like, y'all don't understand. Like, I'm sure there's other people out there that can, you know, do these kind of things, but like, not like her, like she is just the expert. Uh, Not like my nutritionist though. (laughs) (laughs) You don't understand. (laughs) Uh, I love that so much. And you're very right. Like, um, you know, our body, it's the only thing that we have that will continue to give back to us over and over and over again. And, you know, we tend to even look at other types of investments. You know, a lot of things we talked to, you talked about are like depreciating assets, our body, our soul, our mind is the one thing that will continue to give back to us again and again. And again, I can't tell you how much money I've spent on my own personal development. I do not regret one, you know, dollar of anything that I've ever spent on myself for my mental health, for my physical health, ultimately at the end, because I know it'll give back to me tenfold, not only in my business, uh, how I'm able to show up for my clients and how I get to serve, how it all show up in my own relationships. You know, it's, it's going to always give back to you way more than any other relationship. And there's never a right time to start. You know, summer is here right now. Um, it's June, but whatever time you're listening to this, um, you know, we're always thinking like, well, here, maybe after this trip, here, maybe yeah. after Christmas, and then it's the winter yeah. time. Here, maybe well, I after- started what? Yeah. In August, I started in August. So I went through all of this through um, Thanksgiving and Christmas mm-hmm. and man, <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, is if I wouldn't have gone through it through Thanksgiving and Christmas and I waited, then I would have been going through it through, you know, other holidays yeah. in the summer and whatever. So it's like, yeah, there's never like, a right time like you just just do it like don't hesitate just do it just and if you can only heal during a certain time of the year like we're gonna have a really hard time yeah. like healing in general because like, oh. I only can heal under this perfect circumstances when I don't have any trips and I don't have to wear a bikini and I don't have any travel plans and I don't have any events planned it's like this is going to be tough. So like we have to be able to adapt. Yes. Um, conditions aren't always going to be optimal. There will be events, there will be trips, there will be get togethers, there will be food involved and not always healthy food surrounding you. That's the culture that we live in, but we still have to really, really have that powerful why to lean back on, set those boundaries. I'm choosing to do this for me. This is not restrictive. I'm healing my body and doing things Um, that are going to allow me to be the best version of myself. And that's what we use is that internal conversation to keep us pushing forward. And then as we, we do this work and we have that level of determination, you come out like a freaking badass and confidence as confident as ever, just like Brit here. I mean, light and day, you guys, Uh, (laughs) like her confidence that she just radiates, um, like now when she like walks, walks in a room and she's like, boom, Brit is here, you know, (laughs) and it's just as confident because like, yes, like I, I've helped coach you along the way, but at the end of the day, you had to do the work. You had to deal with the, the demons that would pop up in the middle of the day, in the morning times, you know, that would come up and you had to overcome those all on your own. And you had my little voice in the back of your head. Um, but at the end of the day, like you had to do the work and you're the only person who is really able to get you to where you ultimately are today. So we're basically, we're just an awesome team. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for all everything. I mean, seriously, you were like 
the answer to all my prayers. <laughs> You're so welcome. And if you guys want to see if this is a good fit for you, we do a free 30 minute call. Uh, that's actually what Brett and I did even before we even got started. Um, you can book it on our website at rachelshear.com. We just want to get to know a little bit more about your goals, your symptoms, where you're at right now. Um, see if it's a good fit for us. See if it's a good fit for you. See if we're able to help you. And if so, we'd love to walk with you on this journey of healing and reaching your best self physically, mentally, on all levels, ultimately. And Britt, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show here today. I know so many women are going to take so much from today's episode and men too who are struggling with gut issues but i know women can really on a on a much deeper deeper level so thank you for coming on today thanks so much for having me all right you guys if you know someone who suffers from gut issues ulcerative colitis and autoimmune condition or has even been thinking about transforming their body, their fitness, uh, share this episode with a friend, pay it forward. And I hope you guys enjoyed today. This has been Share Madness.